Hi, my name is Steen Johansson. I live in Copenhagen, Denmark. Today I would like to talk about God and his creation of the universe. God shows himself both through his word, our Bible, and through his creation, our nature. As both the Bible and science fascinate me, last year I decided to create a PowerPoint series on God and science. And about a month ago I was really thrilled when Douglas asked me to do a podcast for his premium site. I got to know Doug when I, uh, when he moved to Sweden 22 years ago, which was right after I was baptized. Now let's talk about the Big Bang Theory. I'm sure you have heard about it, but could you explain it? Hopefully it doesn't shake your faith. It is actually faith building, as I would like to show you during the next 10 to 15 minutes. The Big Bang Theory basically states that at some point in time in space, there was nothing. Absolutely nothing, that's hard to grasp. And in the next instance the entire universe came into existence in a huge flash of light. That sounds a lot, lot like the first chapter of the Bible in Genesis 1.1. talks about the beginning, no date specified. Next verse talks about the emptiness, there was nothing. Verse 3, we have light and everything else coming into existence. Basically it says that the universe was created from nothing. And this is a scientific statement. It doesn't say anything about why it was created. Science usually doesn't talk about why, but it talks about how things happen. And the Bible talks a lot about why it happened, but not very scientifically about how it happened. Generally speaking, the Big Bang refers to the idea that the whole universe has expanded from an extremely hot, extremely dense singularity in the beginning and it continues to expand to this day. If we just go a hundred years back in time, many physicists meant that the universe was not created, it had always existed. They call it a steady state universe. Even Albert Einstein in his earlier days believed in the steady state universe. Of course later he changed his mind when he understood more of the facts and how the universe works. In 1916 he came out with a general theory of relativity that he had to add a factor called lambda, that's a cosmic factor. It helps the equation to be correct, even in circumstances that he couldn't explain, and that kind of bugged him, and he's been said to regret the necessity of such a factor. Then in 1929 Edwin Hubble the Hubble telescope was named after, he discovered that our universe is immensely huge, it's much bigger than they believed, and it is actually expanding. And that also points towards that the universe probably was in a small point altogether a long, long time ago. A few years later, 1931, a Belgian guy, he was actually a Roman Catholic priest, he proposed the Big Bang Theory. He didn't call it that, he called it a hypothesis of the primeval atom. But his opponents tried to mock him and call it the Big Bang Theory. And that name kind of caught on and we still use it today. Then during the next kind of, couple of decades they found more and more scientific stuff like antimatter and quarks that are subatomic particles. They were postulated and found because Nature works after natural laws, and when you have laws, you normally have a lawgiver. 